Well, hello and welcome to the Week in Review for Module 4. All right, we're halfway through the course. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing this week, a little bit about uh, what we touched on last week, and then I want to also um, kind of look ahead for, uh, forward to Module 5. So last week in Module 3, you did have a discussion where you were looking up jobs and opportunities uh, anywhere, really anywhere in the country uh, that you might be interested in. And I think, Paige, you have the job of nursing home administrator. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about, about that. Um, uh, Ayana, you had one for HR, uh, human resources, and that was kind of a more generic uh, HR approach, which is what I would recommend that you'd really look at uh, anywhere, getting your foot in the door anywhere within HR. There's so many different other uh job descriptions within HR itself. But Paige, you had a very a specific one about nursing home administrator. And I just want to show both of you guys something real quick, because usually, you know, there's always a group, maybe 20, 30 percent of a class that has an interest in this area. And especially if you live here in Ohio, um, there's a certain route that you're going to take to be a nursing home administrator, or at least a recommended one. And the first part of that route is what you're doing right now, and that's getting a bachelor's degree. Uh, in a health-related field. Um, now, if you do happen to live or move into a different state, maybe Kentucky, Michigan, take a look at what they require. Uh, a lot of them have very similar type of licensure uh, requirements. So let me just show you Ohio's, for example, and then we'll move on and we'll talk about what we're doing in Module 4, but I wanted to hit uh, hit this real quick. So let's get, let's get me off the picture here. Um, and let me bring up that website. So here we have the, um, this is through the state of Ohio, and I, um, the Ohio Department of Aging kind of cut off a little bit there, as you can see. But basically, the Ohio Board of Executives for Long-Term Services uh, and Support has four tracks that, uh, if, that you can become a um, licensed nursing home administrator. One is the administrator in training track. And you must have earned a bachelor's degree or higher, check. And then you need to do kind of this nine-month uh, administrator in training program, which has these pretty significant 150, 100, 1,500 hours of internship. Um, now, there's also another way to do this. If you have a master's degree, it's a little bit less. It's only 1,000 hours and six months. So you're definitely on the administrator in training track. And you have the bachelor's degree, or soon we'll have that. And it's a nine month program. Now, there are deadlines in here, so be very aware of the deadlines if you were interested on applying. They seem to, from the last time I uh, looked into it, they had a process where they match you up, I guess, with agencies. Um, again, all that takes time. There is some mandatory things that were done in Columbus, um, kind of professional in service activities that you had to do. Uh, so be, uh, be aware of that. But if you were heading in that direction, I would definitely seek uh, or def look into, do your due diligence, look into becoming a um, an actual uh, licensed uh, nursing home administrator. Um, I also thought there was some reciprocity, too, between states. What that means is if you become licensed in Ohio, that, I'm just making this up, I don't know if it's true, this particular relationship is true, but there was reciprocity somewhere, and I forget what states all were involved, but let's say you were licensed in Ohio and you move into Indiana, uh, they may they may have a reciprocity agreement where um, since you've done the licensing process in Ohio, they honor it in Indiana, for example. Okay, so that's my little spiel on uh, nursing home administrators. So uh, take a look at that if you're interested. I think it's a very interesting path to go. Uh, again, a little bit more education. Uh, you're looking at a nine-month training program on top of a bachelor's degree, but you're generally going to find that as you move higher and higher into professional ranks, uh, they're going to require even more education, um, you know, I guess steps uh, as, as you move through there. So uh, take a look at that. Um, all right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and talk about week four and what we have in here. This week is pretty standard. So we're going to have our normal um, knowledge summary and a case study. This week we'll be focusing on finance, and I think we have the robot case scenario in here about buying a surgical robot. So that's a pretty light week this week. Now what I would encourage you to do is that in Module 5, 
that is when you're going to have your um, career presentation will be due. So uh, use this lighter week to take care of some of those to kind of maybe work on that project. Remember that this is a um, the uh, the career report, the healthcare re career report. You're picking a job, any job. Maybe it's that nursing home administrator. Maybe it's HR recruiter or manager or something within HR. And you're going to basically do a SWOT analysis on that position. So I'm going to pick nursing home administrator. So the strengths might be high demand needed, um, aging population, that kind of thing. Um, weaknesses uh, could be... Um, uh, I'm just making this up again. Maybe questionable reimbursement from Medicare, Medicaid um, policies, which may lead to uh, pressure on the position. Um, you know, if, if you don't get paid, there's generally not, you know, if you don't have the patients paying, you're not going to have the positions available. So there may not be as many positions available. Um, you know, threats could be uh, other external agencies coming into the field of extended care. Um, you know, maybe big places like Mercy Health or ProMedica or um, Cleveland Clinic might enter the arena uh, they have in some areas and just wipe out any other type of competitor. So, um, but there are some big, big national places like HCR Manor Care um, that uh, uh, could probably run head to head with some of these folks. So take a look at that and. Um, um, you know, from that approach, you don't want to do a SWOT analysis on the industry. So don't do a SWOT. You're definitely going to look at the industry. You know, does it have, is it growing? Is it going to provide support um, for that career that you're picking? But um, we don't want an industry report. We want a job report on, on this specific dis job description. So we want to know basically, is it a good thing to get into? Um, and if it is, um, you know, what are the pitfalls? And we want to know what those are too. Now, you may look at your position. You may find out, hey, uh, I just did a bunch of research. And I have found out that um, it's maybe not the one for me. It, it may be very slow growth or no growth over the next 10 years. Uh, if you do find one of those positions, um, it's pretty rare, but uh, it, it can happen in healthcare that you find one of these slow growth or no growth positions. That's okay too. And we want to know about that. So if you end up kind of you think you're in a dead end that's okay um i, I always pick on um the poor medical transcriptionists i would want nothing to do in that area with my career at all those guys are uh sunsetting very quickly so being involved with them in any capacity on a management side um you know no because they're they're being replaced by computers so um just again food for thought on that uh if you do run into a career that doesn't look so hot we want to know about that too um, what I want to try to do is like I did in the other module where since there's only two of you I'm going to bring in all of the the spring ones so you can take a look at there's there were some really good uh, presentations in the spring when we get to the part where we're going to look at them uh, also you guys did your evaluations uh, in three you picked a few picked three of those leadership presentations and did those evaluations um, I will say there are a couple of out of that group, a couple of to look to look at. And I think Paige, you you reviewed uh, Jennifer's. Um, so Jennifer Bergman, uh, she had a really um, a really good one. I, you know, she there's some little bit of reading going on there, but overall, I would say that was a really good presentation. And then Christy Drosis, uh, she had a, a good one as well. Um, so take a look at those. Take a look at their presentations. Go back and look at them. Um, I guess, you know, they were, uh, again, from that spring group, kind of the top uh, of what we had. And uh, use those as templates going forward. So when you do your leadership presentation, maybe kind of model what they did, especially like in Jennifer's case. I think in that second one that she did, um, it was uh, really, really good and a lot less reading on it. Uh, but Christy was always uh, kind of consistent throughout. She had a good presentation, not a lot of reading, um, but uh, kept the flow going and the content uh, going. And um, notice how Jennifer, too, has like the professional uh, dress uh, going on as she did her presentation. Again, 
do what you do for these, kind of what you would do if we were having an in-class presentation that day. Um, we don't do the in-class presentations anymore. We used to. We used to have everybody come to Toledo and do that, but we don't do them anymore. So uh, we do them online. So kind of do the same thing with the kind of, I'd say, business casual is what you need to do with these presentations. So, all right, enough on that. Enough looking forward on Chapter 5. All right, well, that concludes the week in review for Module 4. And as always, thanks for watching.